I'm doing the walk down to Onka home pool to do one of the last runs through there for the season. It's about the end of August now. It is a what can it be 10 minute walk 10 minute walk or so. I'm fishing on the side where the steep cliff is today and I'm on my own so I have to keep in mind to be a little bit careful. It is uh, very shallow wading here, nice and easy and especially in lower water level. But then you come to just an edge where it becomes well, not drastically deeper but significantly deeper so you just from water to your thighs until swimming depths it's just a few steps in between there <laughs> so and then you're down if you make a swim there then you're down at the cliff when having waders on you know that it's not the best idea to come to a scenario where you have to swim uh, wading belt tight around the body with slim waders it's um, it makes things a lot more safe, but uh, still, I'm alone here, so I have to be a little bit careful, I can't get any help. But uh, yeah, in, in high water level it's a completely different story, a lot more pressure on the legs over there, so... Then I would definitely make sure to have some kind of safety, like a wedding staff or something, but... I'm gonna get out, hammer for salmon, beginning with the floating belly, vision hybrid. 15 foot uh, clear intermediate tip and a long tapered leader on top of that so uh, this uh, copper tube uh, willy gun will uh, get down quite some I think so I'm excited to get started What a gorgeous morning, the fog is every now and then coming through down here, it's just shining some light through it, through the trees, in just a, an hour it will be bright daylight and it's just 640. First run didn't give anything, so now I'm heading out again, I switched rod. It's just another 15 footer, but this time with uh, a sink 1 3. So, rear part sinks, sinks like intermediate, which is the same as sink 1, and sink 3 is uh, the tip. Uh, so, this will go down quite a bit more. I'm fishing with the, uh, the fly called the usual. So, give it a swing out here, see what happens. The sun is quickly coming out now there's still some shade in the best part of the spot so I will not give it such a, such a long rest I fished quite near the surface the first time so that I don't think they were so disturbed by it so I'll head out again and uh, give it a go I'm curious to hear what you have to say about it I'm no salmon expert but in most types of fishing like like this that we fish on the same spot over and over again to give it a bit of a rest it's usually a good idea and so as well in salmon fishing but I'm curious to hear what you think Overhead casts are not good for windy conditions and <laughs> all of a sudden came the first little breeze of the day. <laughs> While retrieving, I hooked into something here. not big and all that it does is to mess up my coming cast but small grayling yep. what can you learn of catching a grayling well 
for for the first you can learn that you do something good that attracts fish so your fly looks attractive to something at least and that's about it what you can learn about squid <laughs> oh the second thing is that they usually stand in holes and can be sort of the same spots as uh, salmon uh, what i've been told is that if there is a lot of grayling in a hole there is most likely not standing a salmon there so it's maybe not a good uh, good thing in the moment but it's a nice thing to to uh, take notice of so it's a good thing to ask yourself like okay where did i catch that grayling i keep that in mind this was in the end of the swing phase quite close here i know there is a hole there at this water level i usually just wade through it but from a further upstream position i would be able to fish that The typical noise my dad always used to do <laughs> when he's frustrated and reeled in after the second run fished a bit deeper this time and in the last couple of casts i just played around a little bit feeding out a little bit more line really tried to work on it to sink down enough i feel like i could fish a heavier line than a sink three um, i'm a bit in a doubt if i should do that but was what was frustrating was that when i reeled in the fly was uh, going backwards, tangled up on the leader. So it's always annoying, but I'm, I had a feeling that it was in the last couple of casts at least. It wasn't during the entire run. Now I went back to the other rod, the graphene model. And uh, using the wheelie gun, I put on the uh, Sync 5 tip on this uh, hybrid line. And with this heavy, uh, a copper tube, a long leader. I'm sure I would fish deeper than before. So I just had a feeling that, oh, imagine there is a salmon standing there wanting this setup. It felt so good. So I just fished the lower part here where the fly was potentially going backwards. Give it a go again. So when fishing with a sinking line or a sinking tip, the idea is that you want the line to sink, right? And the best way I know it is to cast 90 degrees and then hold up the rod as it goes down. And then when it started to get down to where you want to fish it, you slowly lower the rod. So you need to get the rod tip down to the surface for the fly to really start to swing. But during the first part of the, of the cast, you want to cast high and don't fish the fly, it's just about getting, getting it to sink first. That way you get it down deeper than if you cast in the angle where you want the fly to start to fish. So I want the fly to start fishing there and swing to there. But I cast further up, like 90 degrees, giving it slack until the position where it should start to swing. Showing you one, one more time, casting 90 degrees with a sinking line is quite difficult. I do a false cast like that. Drop, dropping it down on the surface once and sending it out. High rod tip, high rod tip. Lowering it down. And there we have it. Little bit of extra work, but getting it down in a controlled way. It was worth a try. So this stretch here might look frightening to you. And it's a really cool area. You fish just below this steep cliff here. It's really high. Your five meter fly rod will not reach over the over the top of the cliff, probably a 15 meter high uh, drop. 
but outside it it's wadeable the whole way around so we'll fish the upper part here of the cliff here i definitely want to get down so i'll be fishing a 90 degrees or even slightly upstream letting it tighten up and when it tightens up i want it to swing upwards towards the fish it is an awkward angle to fish on the salmon from here but i'm definitely at them this is a hole that holds salmon the whole season now it's end of august so there will for sure be salmon standing here but they are easier to fish on in the upper part where i just fished That's a sign to take a break. Got a big mess on the running line, but it fixed itself, no problem. Yeah, nothing happened here. So now I fished the uh, sort of upper part of the cliff. I chose to end there. I just had fished very intensively for many hours. So now I feel like I need to have a break. But you can fish all the way down to the campsite or the base camp at, at least. But now I chose to quit and walk back this way that, which I came from because I have my stuff here. But uh, yeah, that's a little insight on how I, how I fish Camp Onka, the cliffside. In general, you can fish quite uh, heavy lines here. I usually don't go with a full float or anything. At least uh, intermediate tip and a weighted fly. Here at Camp Onka we can also cross over to the other side. So that side I would say is much preferred in my opinion in really high water level because here you need to be able to walk this 20 meters out. Because the first 20 meters are just so shallow. If you can't wade out to there, if the water is too high I feel that it's sort of a waste of time to fish here. So uh, there is a measuring station where you can see the water level further upstream. And if it's three digits, like 100 cubic meters per second going through, it is very tough to get out here. But uh, like now it's about 70 cubic meters. And I think anyone is capable of walking out there. Uh, it's uh, if you if you're able to walk and wade out in in a stream, this place will be no problem. So I talked a little bit about safety earlier when we started, but it's um, I just want to say that too. I don't want to scare you. <laughs> it is uh, you can walk just knee deep and be able to fish this stream at this water level, which it is in the majority of the season. Up here you have the. The long, long grass area, you can fish that as well. Especially the upper part I really like, there's a bend there. Until the main current goes over to the other side. And uh, after that you need to be able to wade out quite tough. But you can fish the, the entire thing through if you wade out quite far. But uh, yeah, the main thing where, where the most salmon is caught is in this lower, lower part right here that we focused on today. So that's a bit of an introduction to the Kamponka cliffside. Let me know if you want to see uh, more descriptions of uh, this uh, fantastic river here. The Fisher Dream Beat is uh, just under 10 kilometers, so it's so much to fish. This is one of the main spots. It's definitely something you should uh, try if you come here.